My name is uh, Pat Mautua. Uh, I'm a visual artist and uh, I studied at Rocks Drift uh, during the period like 79 and 80. That's where I uh, encountered uh, the works of uh, John Mafangeju. My having to go to Rocks Drift was uh, you know, I had won a prize in 1969, and uh, the prize was a scholarship, which I was supposed to study in a university. And then the prize then was about 1,000 rand, which uh, during that time, it could put you through to university for four years. But uh, because of uh, us not being allowed to get to universities, uh, one of my friends, uh, Mzwa Kentlabati, had studied at Rocks Drift and he thought it would be best for me to, to go to Rocks Drift. Incidentally, it happened to be a place where one of my mentors, Dan Rakwate, had studied. And in 1971, I applied and I got to, to be accepted at Rocks Drift. That's when I, I got to see works of the likes of Bumiko uh, Sizulu, Azaria Mbata, John Mafangeju, Dan Rakwate, and all these other sort of uh, luminaries of the time who had studied there. Uh, one of the people who whose work struck me most was uh, John Mafangeju. John Mafangeju's uh, work was more about the social history and uh, the ordinary happenings in our lives. It uh, struggled between politics and, and, you know, just ordinary life. Uh, but it was very simply put, and what I loved about his work was that he would actually carve and do something and narrate to a point that at times you wouldn't uh, need him to come and explain the work. You'd actually read from the narration and understand. And also, I liked it because uh, the, the thing was that you could read and if you needed to refer, you'd actually peruse through newspapers and some books and actually get the gist of the message. And uh, during that time, there was very little knowledge about the art happenings in, in uh, Namibia. And he was, if I were to say, he's one of the first Namibian artists that I, that whose work I've, I've encountered. And he, I think he represented Namibia so well around here. And also talking about, you know, th some of the things in Namibia and some of the things here, both in the urban life and in the rural life because he'd be talking about, uh, you know, somebody who's had eight wives, so many children, so many goats, and so many, you know, that, that kind of thing. And for me, it's, it's, uh, it's almost like a fairy tale, but it was a real fairy tale in a way, you know. I think because of his, you know, the, the simple honesty of his work, his work was, was loved and uh, it, it actually, I would say, is stood the test of time because uh, stories will always be told, countries will always be remembered, happenings will always be, be there and will always be chatting about, about some of these things. And I think because of that, uh, 
he became very famous to a point that I think he sold quite a lot. I mean, during his time, both overseas and locally. And it, it broke, you know, the, the barrier between, you know, the, the religious and, and political because he would actually easily merge one into the, into the other. And, and it was also very celebratory because this, it's got some of the pieces that says uh, God for us all, you know. It's a simple message, you know, it's a, which has got a bigger, endless meaning, you know, on its own. And it's something that can be said over and over and over again till, you know, 